you know, people are going to think I'm absolutely crazy, but you know, I actually don't blame them. I think I'm absolutely crazy right now. Yeah, it's like I just see the world differently. It's kind of like I have my childhood brain back with all the crazy curiosity memory excitement about the world combined with super fast neurons Bouncing around all of those things in my brain just connecting in so many different ways and all these questions, questions. And I realize if I could actually create scientific discoveries like this, but I don't think anyone would believe me or give me the job to do it. <sighs> and that's probably the saddest part of this whole fucking nightmare. I might have a genius to unlock the entire universe but I'll never but there's a really big chance I'll never be able to do it I know it. Okay, so if autism is the systemizing brain, the extreme systemizing brain, one that is tied to the physical world, and treats science, the laws of science, the laws of nature, numbers as intuitive thought. That's great, but how do you help my, or how does that help my three year old severely autistic child like he's not going to become the next Einstein I'll be surprised if he ever learns how to read or write or hold a pen he's got zero motor control he types five got zero motor control. Or the Nonverbal ten year old who makes strange noises in the supermarket. Boy, 
fights and screams at things with his arm, with his hands half dangling. Can barely pick up a pen or learn to read. Carly Fleischman might be a genius, but she still types like 12 words per minute. What the hell does any of this have to do with my kid having a systemizing brain. Well, you see, the brain of an autistic person is wired differently. So when I say that the autistic brain is different, what I mean is that it is systematic to its core. It's going to think of your entire body as a system. A biological system so when your body's autonomic system even though it's not thinking about the movement that it makes it still has the electrical signals and thought processes to move the brain has to actually make the connection before you move. So you might, so the connections that an autistic person has to make, the brain might not really have a full grasp of what it's doing because it is not built properly for the system it is in. Oh yes. Well, many cases, these people have conditions like dyspraxia. So it has to navigate through this maze that difficult. it doesn't quite yeah. understand. Rather than to being able to just push buttons with and take the intuitive route. Is how the brain is wired differently. I have discussed. Kind of like MS, if you might even think about it. Or that's kind of how the MS society tried to describe MS to me when I was nine. You see, we play a game, four children standing in a row. And the facilitators told us to change the sentence. I start with an action and the person on the end does it. But there's someone in the middle intervening. So when someone, so when the brain says wave to the audience, the last person in line jumped. They might have thought that this was an interesting analogy for children ranging from the ages of 4 to 11, but you know, it might actually have some real application. And slowly you have to be able to control your brain more, which is absolutely exhausting.
but they do get better as they control their brain more and may be able to speak, may be able to control the thoughts, control the pathways into the brain, make the better connections so that their brain runs more smoothly and more in tune with their actual thought processes. It might also be why autistic people prefer to type or write or use communication other than the freaking voice because often there's a shorter distance from brain to this to to expression And this is truly the where the systemizing brain breaks down. Where systemizing is not an adaptation because the brain is paralyzed within its own body.